Hi everybody, this is Sam Carey from the New Ed Tech Classroom, and welcome to the third video in my six-part series about how to take an integrative approach to technology and education. In the first video in this series, I argue that in order to meet this extraordinary moment in education, we need to strategically integrate technology into our curriculums. In the second video, I showed some tangible ways that you could take a goals-oriented approach to technology integration. So for example, instead of hearing about a cool tool like Flipgrid and then deciding that you want to use it with your students, instead, we would start with our goals and identify that we want to teach our students important 21st century skills, such as collaboration and communication, and then pick a program like Flipgrid in order to help us build those skills with our students. It might sound like a small difference, but taking that goals first approach is the first important step to ensure that we're using technology in strategic, meaningful ways. In this video, I'm going to show you how to strategically sequence lessons using technology. And I truly believe that learning how to do this is the key to effective purpose-driven technology integration. Starting to use technology to help students achieve rigorous goals is a critical first step. But the next piece has to be learning how to put technology programs in sequential order in order to build toward a bigger picture learning goal. So to illustrate the importance of intentionally sequencing our tech integrated lessons, let me return to the Flipgrid example. Like I already mentioned, we're already on the right track if we're first starting with a rigorous goal, like teaching students how to build communication skills with technology, and then identifying a program like Flipgrid that can help us achieve that goal with students. However, a single one-off lesson where you're helping students build collaboration or communication skills with a tool like Flipgrid is only going to go so far. What's most powerful is when we can figure out how that individual activity fits within a bigger picture framework that works toward a larger learning target. And once you learn how to intentionally select programs to achieve goals and then put those in a strategic order, you're going to build a foundation upon which you can continue to add new programs and add new layers of complexity as both you and your students continue to develop new skills. Now, there are lots of ways to do this, and I'm not claiming that mine is the only way or that it's even the best way. But what I can say is that what I'm going to show you has been extremely effective in my own classroom, as well as in the classrooms of other teachers that I've supported. So the formula that I use to strategically sequence lessons using technology takes the four C's for 21st century learning that I showed you in the last video and pairs it with the five E's lesson plan. So now let's take a look at what this would actually look like. To begin, we'll look at the five E's lesson plan. The first E stands for engage. In this stage of the lesson sequence, you can build on students' prior knowledge, hook their interest, or make connections to previous lessons. In the explore part of the sequence, students will be learning about a new topic, skill, idea, or concept. And in the explain phase, students will begin to process and make meaning out of what they've learned. In the elaborate stage, students dig deeper to apply their learning in authentic ways. And this stage of the lesson often involves students creating. And in the evaluate stage, you could give students some form of assessment. And you can also have students share their work with their peers, reflect on what they did, and set goals for the future. Now, the five E's is only half of the formula. The second half is incorporating the four C's for 21st century learning. So just a reminder, the four C's stand for critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity. It's unlikely you'd be able to consistently incorporate all four of those skills in a five E's lesson plan. What matters is that you are intentionally choosing to teach those skills. So for example, in the engage phase, I might be focused on building students' skills in communication. In the explore phase where students are going to be learning about different material, I might focus more on critical thinking. In the explain phase when students are making meaning of what they learned, I could plan for some collaborative activities. And in the elaborate phase where students are going to dig deeper, I'm going to come up with a creative project that they'll do to show what they've learned. And lastly, in the evaluate stage, I'm going to focus again on communication when students are sharing their work with others, as well as reflecting on their work and setting goals. Notice that in this video about technology integration, I actually haven't talked about technology tools yet. We're going to get there now, where we're going to look at how to actually apply that formula to a learning target. So let's take, for example, the learning target 
that students will be able to use different multimedia tools in order to explain how the Egyptian pyramids were built. Most of the tools that I'm going to mention are tools that I already showed in the previous video, but I'm also going to show a couple of new ones in this one as well. So in the engage phase of the lesson where I want to build students' skills in communication, I could choose to use a tool like Padlet where I could have students post concise predictions about how they think the pyramids might have been built. And then we could also build in some digital literacy skills when talking about appropriate ways to comment on each other's posts. Under the explore phase, in order to build students' critical thinking skills, I'll have them watch an Edpuzzle video about how the pyramids were made. And then I'm going to set that video up with questions that students have to answer in order to proceed through the video. This will help students monitor their own understanding and they'll have to go back and rewatch parts of the video if they need to search for a correct answer. Then I could use Nearpod's Virtual Reality Explorer tool to have students look at 360 images of the pyramids and make observations about what they see. Then for the explain phase where students will be making meaning of what they learned, I'm going to have them do a collaborative activity by working with a partner to make an instructional video in Flipgrid explaining some of the different theories that people have about how the pyramids were built. In the elaborate phase where students are going to be working on creativity, I could have students make an explanatory web page in Adobe Spark post to show what they've learned about the theories of how the pyramids were built using different multimedia tools. And then coming back full circle to the evaluate phase where again, I'm going to be working on communication. I could have students post all of the links to the web pages they made to a Padlet so the rest of the class is able to see their peers' web pages and leave them comments. This formula for integrating the four C's for 21st century learning and the five E's lesson plan can also be the building blocks for implementing a project-based learning curriculum, as well as incorporating universal design for learning concepts. The point I'm trying to make here is that when you use this formula, you're building yourself a solid foundation to be able to launch into all different sorts of innovative teaching practices. So for you to get started using this formula, here's what I recommend you do. Take a look at a lesson sequence that you've taught and see how it already fits into the five E's. If it doesn't work, what might be missing and what could you add? Then think about which of the four C's skills might work with that lesson sequence. Is there a place in your lesson where it would make sense to build your students' collaboration skills? Or is there a place where you might introduce a creativity app to build your students' skills in creating with technology? Lastly, to strategically pick the right technology program to use, start with some programs that you already know, and then do some research by looking into tools that are going to best help you achieve the outcome that you're looking for. So to recap, the key to integrating technology in meaningful ways and ensure that we're building the relevant 21st century skills that our students are going to need is to use a research-based rigorous formula like the four C's combined with the five E's lesson plan. If you're interested in digging even deeper into this topic, join me in my 21st Century Classroom online course, where we'll be taking a comprehensive look at what it takes to fully integrate technology into your curriculum and create an innovative classroom that truly prepares your students for the society in which they live. If all of that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to get your name on the early bird waitlist. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through all the major steps of taking an integrative approach to technology in your curriculum. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you there.